Greetings everyone and welcome to a new cycle, a new city builder developed by Core Engage and published by Daedalic Entertainment, launching into early access on January 18th on Steam. I've been waiting for this game as it looks like an amazing mix of Frostpunk and Anno. We build up a settlement, advance through eras, fight the climate and manage our population while providing more and more complex services and materials. The game is already quite fleshed out and provides you with a campaign, sandbox mode and scenario. This is a sponsored video and I like to show you the beginning, but because I do enjoy this game so much, we are making an extensive let's play right away. I am also playing on hard mode, just to get the blood pumping. If you are interested in the new cycle, don't forget to check out the link in the video description. And without further ado, let's jump into a new game. We have now these three. Uh, modes available there right now. Um, the sandbox is a rather easy mode, so unfortunately it's not an endless mode right now where we have to face increasing challenges. The campaign is that. So don't get fooled by that. We're still playing with only one city on one map, but we do get the occasional mission um, while also getting under pressure quite a bit. Plus achievements are active and of course I would like to earn some achievements there as well. We're going to select this one. We're going to play as promised on hard mode just to get a nice feeling for it. And we're probably playing, yeah, on the meadow, um, just for the looks as well, as I think it's the nicest looking map there right now. You can also choose off the tundra and the step if you like to, but the meadow it is for the beginning. With that, let's jump into a new, brand new game of New Cycle. Go, 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 go. Alrighty, and here we are now, finally in the game. A new cycle has begun. Day one it is. And yeah, right in here we are right now with a few of our survivors that are running around. Eloise Palmer here, for example. And yeah, I really like that all of them are simulated, right? So we do have this gal here, for example, with her demands, with her needs right now, with her education. She's also having no access to health services right now and also her buffs that we can see here that is giving her morale boost because it's the beginning of spring down here we have it too spring year one it is and yeah no dan dangerous weather events observed right now that's a good thing for us because with that we can actually start with the building process on this on this fresh map where we are right now and boy we're in for a treat. This game is complex and it's long. And we are, we're starting with Welcome to the New Cycle. You're now the governor of this little community. It's been nearly half a century since the first solar flare. In the initial moments of the catastrophe, we lost our entire technological infrastructure, our means of global sourcing and almost everything that we can share as a civilization. The following years were humanity's darkest, having to wrestle with constant impossibility and despair from battles fought with sticks and stones to nuclear wars. We ended up destroying ourselves what little the sun had left for us. And civilization fell. Everyone here was born in this new world and you have to be their leader. Our current flimsy shelter can't carry us far. We must rebuild everything from scratch. We need to rediscover our lost knowledge and explore our surroundings to create new possibilities. Most importantly, beyond merely surviving, we have to find a way of securing our next generation. And we don't know how we can preserve life as we know it, but we can at least help build something that we may call home. All right, and with that, we need to transition to life. The nomadic lifestyle is gone and we want to settle here. First off, we need to get logs and stone in. Um, and with that, we do need a field camp. So let's go ahead. Uh, we don't have a lot because most things we need to, of course, research first. Um, but a field camp is something we can have. And we can have a quick look around and we can see there's forests and also stone deposits over there. There might then also be iron over there, but that's something for later. Let's go ahead and get us this field camp into the into this area there. I like it because there we have lots of uh, juicy resources and poof, there it goes. A mere construction site right there. Going to take a while for this to finish. And my first builders will then be on their way now. We can also speed up time if I want to, up to three times the game speed. And then we can just watch them bugger yeah, along here, those poor sorts. Lena Buckley, a worker right now, and she is getting resources over there. All of them also have a morale system right now that's pretty low, so we also want to start raising that. And a little bit later, that camp is coming to completion. 
There it is in all its glory and we now need to assign someone to that. Right now we only get basic workforce out of it. Um, and as I can see I do need three for the woodcutter. I can assign them and then we also can get three for the stone cutter. And as I can see we have actually quite a lot of stone in the surrounding area. 3,300. Um, I thought there was more wood, but those trees don't give as much as those rocks, it seems. And there's now six people working on that, producing me resources. All of this is very detailed, I think. So they're even then processing that in the field camp into things I can use and then transport that back home to my main storage area that we have uh speaking about my main area right now i can see here in my main hall that we are now in the foundation phase so we have different phases cycle one it is right now where we have certain needs certain buildings unlocked and our goal of course is to get to the new iron age um, as the next cycle for that we do need quite a lot of knowledge points and also a bit more population and this will then unlock for more needs and more buildings down the road we can also research um buildings with our research tree. That is something though I will have a look in a second. Also up here we have our population management right now. So we are starting with the workers. There's a different tiers of population then available to us. And I was talking about the morale system. There we have it. So it's a 32, it's a regular morale. And we want to get this up of course by providing water and food. Now, while these basic resources are coming in, let's follow along the story there for the beginning. Um, I also need a name. And what more fitting name it is than a sleepy hollow town coming out of, of its dark age, right? As we are now founding this one here. Sleepy hollow it is. Yeah, the day is a bit foggy there, sand in the air, and we finished the first step. After a promising start, we may go on gathering now re nearby resources and we want to focus now also on producing more complex materials and that is lumber out of a lumber mill. That is my first processing building that we have then. It's also rather big, so let's not have it too close to the center there. And yeah, probably have it then also next to my field uh, camp that we have because with that we can then deliver the logs right away and produce planks out of it. And there's then already the workers carrying things Finally, over. What are you carrying over there, by the way, the right now? The end of the tunnel. Looks like a... A luggage. That, uh, just luggage that he's taking with him. There's the crates, of course. But I guess we do need 24 locks. That's quite a bit. And after that, construction has started. And I love how detailed it is, right? So from the foundation all the way up to a finished building. You can watch it. And there it is, the next building, the lumber mill. And the lumber mill does require now logs as an input. It is then producing planks out of that. It needs labor forces and it also needs, well, actually a road connection that I can't provide yet because the road has not been researched, but we can start with the lumber still and assign five people to that. And they're going now to process 14 planks a day. And in the middle of the night, we finish the 30 lumber that we need. Next up, we need to build a road to connect the lumber mill and the main hall. However, we don't have that yet. And that means we don't need to go into researching. However, with the mission, we actually unlocked the road, so I'm fine with that. We just need to go ahead now and select the roads then appropriately. So let's have it along the, the road that already exists here, right? And continue also all the way down to the main hall. And with that, we have finished it. Next up, we need to provide water to my people. That, for that, we have a well. Draws clean water from the underground source. Requires quite a bit of stone, but that should be fine. Up here, we have the water sources. So yeah, let's squeeze in the well right here for another source of resources. 
Let's also go ahead and just have the road then here. The road fortunately is being built instantly. Also, we can see then some poles coming up here with, I guess, lights and also electricity that flows around. The well, of course, does not need book force. Next up on the list is some food. Right now we are out of it. Um, we have a food consumption and when we are out of food, well, we lose morale. So we do need a gathering camp um, as well. And let's have this one where we do have lots of different resources. And over here I can see that we have fish, mushrooms and meat. Um, whereas mushrooms are the most important one early on. So let's actually also have it then right next to this lumber mill here. And with that, we have a new building. Let's also connect it with my road then right away. Of course, the most interesting question is, can we have double roads? And yeah, we can. And I also love that there's not additional poles here being built. Rather, they're just in the middle then. <laughs> Perfect. Meantime, there's strangers approaching our camp. Let's have a look at them. The more our settlement grows, the more attention we'll get from passers-by, and by more people will be willing to join us, both more frequently and in larger groups. A group of wanderers, it's two workers. Of course, we can accept them. And with that, we have 37 people in our village. And don't forget, we need 40 for, the, for finishing that first cycle here as well. Meantime, I think the gathering camp has all its resources, and we finished construction. There you go. Let's also assign some workers to that. And they're now going to gather then mushrooms. Once we unlock more steps, we can also assign more workers to it that will then collect different kind of food in addition. So fish we have um, and we have also meat uh, as there it is, right? But we can't gather that right now. Mushrooms though is pretty important already. There it's coming in. Next up, let's continue with a few more roads around the main hall and I will need now to process those mushrooms into edible food because right now, of course, raw mushrooms are a very, very, very dangerous <laughs> thing to eat and for that we do need the soup kitchen. However, I need to research that and this time we're going into researching. So the establishment we already have, basic construction is my next one. It will cost me 24 planks, 50 knowledge points and 24 hours of my time and with that we can start it. And this will unlock then the stockpile, the soup kitchen, and simple meals. There it is, development completed. And with that, we can now build the soup kitchen. And let's have this one run the central, as we're going to need it quite often. Also, we have unlocked the stockpile. This will make it possible to increase my total storage capacity. And I think we can also have this one somewhere here where we have the industry already piled up. Just behind my soup kitchen might be a good spot. And the cool thing is, yeah, we can just connect it then with it, right? There you go. And there is also my soup kitchen coming along and being finished as we speak. We can now start with the first recipe that we have and that is my edible food, basic food it is. And we can also choose then of what ingredients we want to have it. And mushroom water is my first one and this cons uh, well produces then eight basic food every three hours. Let's also assign some four people to that, four workers. With that we only have 19 available now out of the pool of 30. And we're also now consuming mushrooms. Right. And once a day is out, we are also going to see then the total consumption and production per day. Just behind it, we do have then also our stockpile now. Next up, we have to look at our population here. So this is a basic guide of the game that follows us in the first few minutes of it. Um, we are going to be out of that soon. It just gives me some orientation. I think that's a very good idea. And with that, we also need to look at my population tab. There we have it. And in here, we can now go ahead and, for example, increase then morale and efficiency. There's those two. So we have the three classes. And then we have the other field here with the population overview, my morale, 
efficiency menu that we can see over there. And what I can see right now is my efficiency is because of my low morale at only 30 and my workforce ratio is at one. And let's go ahead and distribute a bit more food to my people. That is the regular setup that we can have. And the same goes also for the water. And this takes effect then on the very next day. This will increase my morale then quite a bit because it has dropped already significantly. All right, so this comes now. Um, of course, we also need to check then if I still produce enough food. Next up, supply and demand. And we already did that now, set the ration uh, distribution to regular. And we need to keep this active for full two days. And we can also check it here. We're producing 22 meal right now per day. And let's just hope, oh, and we consume 22. So I do have a slight surplus there of meals right now. For water, also slight surplus. Another problem that we have right now is health. So we have a very low health rating. That's because we don't have any houses available. We also don't have any clothes available and also no access to health services. With this overview, the tutorial is completed. So from now on, we play on our own and we have to expand on our own. Now, with the increasing population, actually, we do have now an equal production and consumption of food. Um, it's important to note that we're in autumn. That means we're probably running out of food during winter because there will be no mushrooms over there. So what I need to do really quickly is I need to set the distribution of food down to... Let's actually have it on low for the moment and the water also on medium for the moment so that we can stockpile some food for winter. Um, next up, I would like to go ahead and also go into Oath. This is then giving me shacks, so my first basic shelter. We should really have this um, for winter ready. And yeah, the costs are fine. 30 hours of research time is quite a bit though. By the way, um, while we are here, let's also have a quick look at the research tree. Most of it, yeah, we can go one step further. That's the cycle to the new Iron Age then, and then it's empty. So this is going to unlock then as we progress. Um, to not spoil too much, I guess, which is a nice idea. All right, yeah, housing it is, that's pretty important. We don't have any other buildings right now, so that we also don't have any health services. So this is something we should check then rather quickly. Or yeah, as we can see, we're stockpiling some simple meals there now, but winter is upon us really soon. We're almost at the second, oh, we are now in the second half of autumn. So that first winter will be pretty harsh, I think. But it's better to have a low ratio of food than no food at all. All right, development completed. The shacks are available. There they are. Do cost me quite a bit and also consume electricity while active. The most basic type of shelter. And yeah, let's go ahead and build this those uh, for the first for the first few houses that we need. And let's have them. Let's have two of them here in the center, consuming the rest of my plum uh, lumber that I have. And then I would also like to have them, of course, connected with a proper street. Once we have lumber in again, we will be able to do this. I bet later those shelters are coming along just fine. There they are. Of course, we do need some road connection for them. There you go. And with that, there's 10 people living in each one of these. They would then provide access, or they also show me then what kind of uh, access they have, they can access to. And right now it's none <laughs> because we don't really have anything. Poor people. We can then also upgrade these houses. For now though, that's not really possible. Since we have a bit more lumber and we're only providing housing for 20 people right now, we have almost 40. Let's build another shack. We really want everyone here to have a proper housing. Yeah, meanwhile, everyone is busy. Autumn is almost over now. Stockpile a few more things. We have lots of mushrooms in stock. That's perfect. I also just love watching city life. That's certainly a job that I would not like to have. Yeah, and the first snowflakes are falling. 
as another shack has been finished as well. And it doesn't take long for winter to be upon us fully. With that, no more mushroom production. So there will be no more mushrooms now that we can find. The gathering camp is out of order. We now have still 72 mushrooms available here that we are consuming for the remaining meal. And then I just hope that it's lasting us a bit uh, through most of winter at least. Also, most people have now a warm home. That's also really important. Since we have some more lumber, let's go ahead and build this one more shack. And with that, we have then also this area here completed. Now the season takes a pretty hard toll on my people. As we can see, the morale is now as low as it could possibly be. We're at the lowest point. Also, season is adding a penalty to 20 <laughs> to the morale and to the health of my population. All right, and with that, we also see unrest. Chief, we feel the need to give you a clear warning. For days, we've been trying to live on rations that barely will out, uh, fill our spoons. Why must we stoop to such a life when we have all the resources we need to improve? Do you honestly find this acceptable? And we expect this to fix within 10 days. Do your duty. I'll see what I can do. And we'll have to endure. Unfortunately, this is the only solution. I can't do a promise that I can't fulfill. We don't have anything else here surrounding us. The mushrooms do not grow, and fish I don't have developed yet. So in this case, we just have to live with that. Now, the good thing is, that was a very short winter, only lasting about two days. And with that, we are in spring once more. Let's actually resume the field kitchen once more, or the soup kitchen that we have here. And yeah, it's warm again. The penalty for winter will go down, or will actually go away, and we get the refreshment buff. Um, Yeah, with that, we have a... Um, quite a bit of morale booster as well. Also, food is coming in again. That was very important. We also get the first annual report for year one that is over now. Two new people joined us in this year and six births took place. Also, we have renewable resources replenished by 55% and also the water balance is 98. We've also built 10 new structures. That is actually pretty cool here. So it's a nice overview of what we, we have achieved so far. Now for year two, of course, the first goal is to really stockpile food. We don't want it to run out anymore. And also we need 40 people. So I hope that with a few more kids coming in, we have nine now, um, we're going to breach the fifth or the 40. And with that, we'll be able then to also uh, advance to the next cycle. Now, in this case, um, let's just check it out. We have the gathering camp that is acti uh, activated again. However, that is not enough. We do need a second one. Uh, unfortunately, there's no other way for me right now to get food, really, as we also don't have fishing unlocked yet. So let's find us a new source of mushrooms. Down here is one, together with some meat. Ah, mushroom one. That's probably the only option that I have right now. So let's build us this camp over here. While also making sure that we kind of like get the meat in there somehow, right? There it is. Perfect. Let's build it. And perhaps we find us another source of food somewhere up here. That's not looking very good. There is mushrooms. Up here we have some mushrooms. So another camp I could, I could think about here. We do consume quite a lot of food, right? So important really that we stockpile a lot of it too. I don't think they need a road connection per se. So we're just going to keep them active now. Yeah, stomachs are getting smaller. Uh, we're producing food again. Water is really low as well. As we are growing more people, we're at 50 people now um, in total. Thanks to also having then the, or more kids coming in. No, 40, sorry. That's the morale. And I do need to have another well. That's really it. Uh, we do have enough resources though. It should be fine. Another well. We cannot just place it to the next one, right? Because we already used those water veins that we have. So for the next one, I do need to find new veins. Up here we have one. And over here we have two. And yeah, where we built that gathering camp, I have two more. So let's also build us that well right next to it. And I think it makes sense to have a road at this point that we make a connection here. Off it goes, going to take a while again to finish those. 
And yeah, with that, onwards to year two, spring it is, and let's grow ourselves a settlement there. Sleepy Hollow, onwards to cycle two, I hope. I hope you enjoyed this one, this, this game and new cycle. We are going to continue in the next episode. Stay tuned.